flex fuel. It's the latest terminology that we as Indian car buyers have to try and understand. And like with the BS6 emission norms, there are many questions that come up. What does this mean for the current car or bike that I own? Should I be waiting for something? And what is the point of this technology to begin with? Let's get into it with a Zig Talk. To simplify this topic, we have to divide it into two different discussions. The first one is your regular fuel, which is going to see an increase in the amount of ethanol that is blended into it. But the majority blend is still going to be regular petrol. This applies to the cars and bikes that are currently on sale right now and even the ones that are on the road. The second discussion is about flex fuel engines, which refers to a type of engine that offers flexibility with regard to the alcohol and fuel blend that it can handle. So you can run these engines on a majority of ethanol and a minority of petrol, a minority blend of ethanol and majority of petrol, or 100% ethanol or 100% pure petrol. As per the draft put out by the government, this is not going to include diesel vehicles. So for the purpose of this discussion, we are only referring to petrol aka gasoline engines. As per the government's draft notification, and I want to get the name right, Roadmap for Ethanol Blending in India 2020-2025, the government is actively looking to increase the amount of ethanol that is used in petrol. Biofuels burn cleaner, and the more ethanol in your fuel, the lower specific emissions get. For example, while running on E10, which is 10% ethanol and 90% petrol, hydrocarbon and carbon monoxide emissions drop by as much as 20%. And if you move to E20, which is 20% ethanol and 80% petrol, carbon monoxide emissions drop by as much as 30% in cars and 50% in two-wheelers. Eco-benefits aside, this move can also reduce our dependence on crude oil imports. As a country, we import about 84% of all our crude oil, which works out to be about $551 billion worth annually. And this puts an extreme burden on our forex reserves. And if we can at least reduce it, if not eliminate it, it can save us hundreds of crores on a weekly basis. However, this is still not a part of the flex fuel discussion. We're talking about the cars and bikes that are already plying on the roads and the ones that you're seeing in showrooms right now. If you didn't know already, there is a 5-10% to ethanol blend in the petrol being sold in at least half the bunks across the country. And as per Niti Aayog, all petrol engines manufactured since 2008 have got rubber and plastic components that are compatible with E10 fuel if only ideal with E5. Does this mean that your older car or motorcycle cannot run on this fuel? Well, no, but the older your engine technology, the more the effects of aging, wear, and performance and efficiency loss. Because for all its benefits, ethanol blended fuel also proves to be more corrosive, especially for plastic and rubber parts such as O-rings, gaskets, and seals. The energy value of ethanol blended fuel is also lower than that of regular petrol. So you are going to see a 6-7% to drop in fuel efficiency if you use an ethanol blended fuel as opposed to regular petrol. This can be countered to some extent if the fuel itself gets cheaper, which it should considering the ethanol is made right here in India. Now the E10 blend is not consistently available across the country at this point, but the plan is to change that by April 2022. The real challenge begins from April 2023 when the next step of moving up to E20 blends kicks in with a pan-India availability target of 2025. It's literally double the amount of ethanol in your fuel, which can prove to be detrimental for the old cars and motorcycles that are currently plying on the road, which, let's face it, account for the majority of all vehicles in use today. Which is why SIAM, the Society of Indian Automobile Manufacturers, is pushing for the availability of protection grade E10 fuel. Which means that even once higher ethanol blends enter the market, they want to make sure that E10 petrol is available for old cars till the end of their life. So E10 and E20 are the targets for cars already sold and the cars that will be sold with slight tweaks in their core engine architecture. So if you are looking to buy a car or motorcycle immediately, there's no reason for you to delay your plans. And if all these changes sound confusing, it's because they are.
The flex fuel discussion, however, is not something that is as immediate. The term itself is being used a little loosely, but it largely refers to engines that can run on heavier blends of ethanol. Because the flexibility that these engines offer in terms of their entire onboard management systems and architecture altogether, they can run on heavy blends of ethanol or petrol or just about anything in between. So E0, E5, E10, E20, E85, E100, these engines can manage to burn any one of these blends or combinations because they have the onboard management systems, the ignition timing, the airflow and fuel flow sensors that can manage the ideal burn with any given blend. Now these engines are available in markets like the United States and Canada but one of the markets that shares a lot of trends with us and the one that's seen the most success with flex fuel engines globally is Brazil. It's the popular auto concept in Brazil with about 80% of all new car sales accounted for by flex fuel engines as of 2019. The flex fuel engines in Brazil operate on E27 or E100 with any blend in between of hydrous ethanol. Now, Indian automakers have shown interest in the technology. Maruti Suzuki, for example, has confirmed its plans for R&D on flex fuel engines. But if you're waiting for these engines and the models with them to be introduced in the market, there are a couple of things that you need to know. Number one, there is still no timeline as to when the first model with a flex fuel engine is going to be introduced because there's a lot of R&D that needs to be done specific to the Indian car market. And it goes without saying that flex fuel engines, whether in two wheelers or four, you are going to see a cost increment with the engine itself. The switch to becoming more domestically sourced ethanol dependent than petrol dependent is going to take a lot of time because we are going to have to ramp up ethanol production as well as storage just to meet our needs of supplying E10 and E20 blend fuel pan India, which is why automakers are pushing for this technology to be advanced gradually. Brazil and the United States alone account for about 84% of global ethanol production with the remainder split between countries like India, China, Thailand and Canada. So as one of the biggest fuel consumers in the world, India will need to be quick but also patient with its expectations of fuel independence. As you'd imagine, there's a lot that we're going to learn as time progresses. There's a lot of work that has to be done in terms of development and changes as well, which is why a lot of manufacturers are just finding it easier to switch to electric because it saves you the hassle of playing landmine hopscotch with constantly changing emission and efficiency expectations. Hope this video was able to offer you some clarity about ethanol and flex fuels altogether. If you have any questions or concerns about this technology change, go ahead and drop them in the comment section down below and I'll do my best to quell those concerns right away. If you like this video, go ahead and hit that thumbs up. Do share it with people as well to get the knowledge across. And if you haven't already, go ahead and hit subscribe. Thanks for watching.